us for a few minutes. Uh, we just wanted to gather and express our support for our Supreme Court nominee, Amy Coney Barrett. And I had the opportunity, as did Senator Fisher, to be at the White House on Saturday to participate in this announcement. And she is someone that you all have gotten to know through her confirmation for circuit court. You're going to learn more about Judge Barrett as we go through this process with our Judiciary Committee hearings and also as she goes to the floor for a confirmation vote. We are so pleased to have a woman who is so accomplished, who is widely applauded by her colleagues, whether they're coming from the left or the right, as someone who is disciplined in the law, has a curious mind, a strong intellect, that has an appreciation for the Constitution and an appreciation for the rule of law. That is something that we are looking for in a jurist who is going to take the seat on the Supreme Court. So with that, I will turn it to Senator Fisher. She will be followed by Senator Capito, Senator Ernst, Senator Hyde-Smith, Senator McSally when she makes it, and Senator Leffler. Thank you, Senator Blackburn. You know, every year in Nebraska, I host an event, and it's called Bridging the Gap. And at this event, we have women of all ages, all backgrounds, who are able to participate and learn from uh, accomplished women. We usually have about three women on a panel. We have had successful business women. We have had people who are very active with charities, in philanthropy. We've had a life coach. We've had politicians. We've had um, broadcasting women who are uh, active as broadcasters. And we have had the first federal judge, first woman, in the state of Nebraska on that panel. Now, the purpose of this every year is to encourage women of all ages so that they can see success, so that they can listen to stories from women who have made it, who have made hard choices along the way, who have raised families, who have cared for aging parents, who have had to balance everything in their life in order for them to, to really achieve their dreams. I think it is so remarkable that we have such a woman before us now. When we look at Judge Barrett, we see an accomplished woman. We see a brilliant jurist. We see a nice person. We see someone who has been able to balance their family life with a husband, seven children, and keep everybody on track. We see someone who's had to make choices in her life in order to move forward in her chosen career. We've seen someone who's a success, all of us especially women, all of us should celebrate that. We should be looking for women to serve as role models. We should be looking for women to serve as mentors and to share their stories with us. So I am very excited as we move through this process now to have a successful, accomplished woman be front and center as we, as we work through a process to confirm her to the United States Supreme Court. And I believe all of us 
need to step forward and celebrate that fact. And as we learn more about her, about her decisions, about her choices, uh, we will all make the decision on if we will be voting to confirm her to the court. I am very pleased to have Judge Barrett before us and before this nation. Thank you. Well, I'm pleased to stand here with my colleagues to talk about Judge Amy Coney Barrett, the President's nomination to the United States Supreme Court. I'm going to have the pleasure of meeting Judge Barrett here in a few hours face to face, and I look forward to asking her not just questions of of judicial consideration, but also uh, relate to her as we all do. And we do this quite well, actually, across the aisle, uh, Republican and Democrat women members of the Senate, to talk about how have you managed, how have, what has your journey been, and what are the choices that you've had to make. And then we will then be considering her nomination. So I look forward to that face-to-face -face meeting with her. Uh, I think that I can't really uh, expand upon what Marsha and Deb and everybody else are going to say, uh, uh, most especially about her qualifications. Um, but I honestly am in awe. As a mother myself of three and now a grandmother of seven, uh, if I get all seven of my grandchildren in a room together, uh, I, I can only last about a half an hour. She's living with seven children and doing it quite well. Um, but it can't be easy at times for her. So what I would implore our Senate colleagues and really the rest of the nation to be, re to be re rejoicing in the fact that we have an accomplished woman to consider, that we have a role model for our girls, our, our daughters and our granddaughters, uh, and that because she has traveled a, a journey that not many of us get to do, that we should use that as an opportunity to inspire that next generation. I mean, she's been asked to put her name forward. She's accepted that. She's putting her family uh, under tremendous scrutiny along with her professional life. And that's not an easy journey in and of itself. But she's also being asked to fill the shoes of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I think that Judge Barrett, for all the rights that Justice Ginsburg fought for for many women in this country, that Judge Barrett's pathway, her journey, has been something that she's benefited from the decisions and the, and the journey of Justice Ginsburg. So I, I hope that sometimes I feel like if you have a different philosophy of something or if you maybe practice uh, your family life or your religion differently than what other people think that, uh, and, and you're a woman, that maybe sometimes that's not an acceptable way to be a woman. Well, you know what, I think now's the time for us to say there's all kinds of ways to conduct your life, be a woman, be, be that judicial mind, that uh, impartial judicial mind that we're looking for uh, with all the different ways to, to, to move through your life and that that's a great thing for our, our daughters and our granddaughters to look forward to. So I'll turn it over to Senator Ernst, and thank you very much. Thank you, Shelley, and thanks to my colleagues, Marsha. Thank you so much um, for coming out today because we do want to express support uh, as we are going through the nominations process, the vetting process for Judge Barrett. And folks, this is what a mom can do. I tell my daughter that all the time. A mom can be a farmer or a rancher. A mom can be a combat veteran. A mom can be a financial planner. A mom can serve in the United States Senate. And most certainly, a mom can be a Supreme Court justice. Anybody that says different is absolutely wrong. So I think that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was an extraordinary woman, an extraordinary woman. Um, when I learned of her death, it choked me up. I was speaking at an event. I was actually speaking, and the first question I got was, what will you do now that Ruth Bader Ginsburg has passed? And it bothered me. It troubled me horribly. 
because she was truly so extraordinary in so many ways, not just because she was a female serving on the Supreme Court, but that she broke so many barriers that women through all ages have faced, whether it was her faith, whether it was the fact that she was a working mother and going on to serve on the Supreme Court. And I'm so thankful that I have had those role models in my lifetime that have set that example. I have tried my darndest to be a good role model for my daughter, who is now at the United States Military Academy and will go on to serve in our nation's army. Um, but I think we've seen these examples, and that's exactly what I see emulated in Judge Amy Coney Barrett. She has been lauded by conservatives and liberals about being just a wonderful judicial mind. But bottom line, they always come back to the fact that not only is she fair, but she is truly a decent human being. And I'm so thankful that now other young women will see that we have had one extraordinary female Supreme Court Justice in Ruth Bader Ginsburg being followed by another truly extraordinary female in Amy Coney Barrett. Folks, this is what a mom can do. And I'm so thankful for that. And I will be followed next by Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith, who served as an agricultural commissioner for the great state of Mississippi. What a mom can do. And Joni has to go back to committee. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for being here today to listen to the message that we have. I am so honored to be standing beside the women that I'm standing beside. We are standing on the shoulders of so many women who came before us. My daughter was five weeks old when I qualified to run for my first elected position. But I knew how important it was for me to do everything I could do for every child in America to make this a better place. I am so thrilled that Judge Barrett is also providing another set of shoulders for these young people to stand on as well. I have total confidence in her. She is an excellent constitutionalist to interpret the law and apply it accordingly. I have total confidence in her ability and her attributes to do just that. I think she will be an amazing addition to the court. I thank you for being here. I thank you for listening to us. This is so important. I just pray for her and I pray for her family as we go through this process. And it's gonna be a tough process, but women are just naturally strong. Women are naturally confident when they're put in the positions to be in that position to act upon those things and to draw from their inner self. So uh, I just ask everyone else to pray for this family as we go through this because she will truly be an amazing jurist. Thank you. And now I think Senator McSally, Martha McSally of Arizona, a fighter pilot and a one that I can't wait to hear from. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to uh, join uh, my wing women here today. <laughs> and our prayers continue to be with uh, Justice Ginsburg uh, and her family in, in their time of grief. And as many have said, uh, she broke barriers. Um, I have uh, many friends who are also in the law uh, field and just the example of breaking through in a very male dominated field uh, in her time of just her relentless uh, breaking barriers and her brilliance uh, in her field. Uh, she really was a, a role model for so many. Uh, and, I, and I think it is fitting uh, that we have uh, Judge Barrett uh, being nominated to continue to push forward in breaking those barriers. She'll be just the fifth woman if confirmed on the court uh, and she will be the first with school-aged children serving on the Supreme Court. And that is something that should be celebrated uh, across the country, men and women, uh, regardless of your political stripes, uh, that, that we are in a place where we can celebrate 
uh, someone like Judge Barrett, who by all accounts we're seeing uh, is seen as a woman of faith and of grace and of brilliance uh, and of compassion, uh, and someone who with seven kids, to include two adopted and one with special needs, uh, is able to balance it all and, and do it in an amazing way that really sets the example uh, for so many women and girls. And I just think the, the hypocrisy that we're seeing from some of the media on the left uh, attacking her for being a mom, uh, you know, attacking her, even asking, you know, how is she going to take care of her kid? Nobody asks the men that. We know that. That's the hypocrisy that normally happens. Mm -hmm. But you would normally have the feminists on the left lining up to defend her. And so we're asking, where are those voices? You know, I know a little bit about that hypocrisy. Uh, the, the left and the, the liberals, they just loved my story as I was breaking through barriers to become the first woman to, you know, fly fighter jets in combat and taking on the Pentagon because they were making our service women wear burqas and then later be the first to command men and women in combat. And they loved my story until I became a Republican <laughs> candidate for Congress. And all of a sudden they were like very much less interested in, in what I, uh, what my, you know, my entire life story was and how this is just a continuation of that service. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but we would just encourage everyone in America to really uh, be celebrating the fact that we have this brilliant uh, woman who is risen to the top of her field, uh, who somehow seems to balance it all and does it with uh, grace and dignity. Uh, so let's stop with the hypocrisy, and I look forward to going through this process. President Trump could not have made a better nomination to the Supreme Court than Judge Amy Coney Barrett. I'm so proud to support her nomination. I look forward to meeting with her later today. Uh, look, she's a woman who is shattering barriers, glass ceilings. Uh, as a businesswoman, as a political outsider, I'm someone who understands that. I also know uh, that she'll be attacked. And as the Senate's newest member, I understand that firsthand. But look, this is an incredibly accomplished, graceful woman. She's a scholar, a jurist, a mom, a wife. And I think we can be so proud as a country. And I just pray that this moment does not tear our country apart, that it brings us together around the Constitution, supporting the original meaning of the Constitution, her ability to bring us together around the freedoms that we have under the Constitution. So I just look forward with, to meeting with her later today and supporting her nomination. Thank you. All right, we've got time for a question or two, and I've got to go back to committee, so Deb will go ahead and take over, but go ahead. Okay, thanks, Senator. Um, this, uh, this question is for Senator Ernst Flash, but Senator McSally and Senator Loeffler, you guys are running for re-election in November. Did the President's performance at his debate last night help you in your re-election and help specifically those women suburban voters vote Republican? You know, if we can keep it to Amy Coney Barrett, <laughs> and if you will get with them separately, I think that would be great because we've all got things that we need to scoot on to. Is that okay? Um, I mean, I would like an answer to the question. I know, after, yeah. Uh, after Coney we Barrett do party. this, yes, then we can get to that. Go ahead. Hi. Um, so uh, Judge Barrett's association with the people of praise didn't come up in her 2017 hearing. Um, do you want to learn more about that during the confirmation process, or should it be off-limits? You know, let me tell you something about religious liberty. And I think many of us know if you're a woman who is pro-life, pro-family, pro-religion, that many times the left will say that we don't want to hear your voice. So we, we get it. We accept that. But I think that religion ought not to be a disqualifier for serving on the federal bench and taking, well, I'm, but her, her religion and how she practices her religion ought not to be a disqualifier because we appreciate freedom of religion. As she goes through this process, we're going to hear more about that, about her life, about her character. And I will tell you this, we know that there are some on the left that would rather you be a secularist or an atheist in order to serve on the federal bench. But again, religious, your religious uh, beliefs and being a religious person, being a mom, 
who takes her seven children to church every week ought not to be a disqualifier. Thank you all so much. Do any of you have an issue with the president saying not condemning white, white supremacists last night and telling what, the Proud Boys to stand by and stand by? I think the president had a strong performance. But I also believe that he needs to be clear about his uh, stand against white supremacy. Uh, it's abhorrent. Uh, I've said that over and over again, and I think he needs